Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are all over the world. This is Dominion TV. We're back for our second episode, and I have my dear friend and brother, Frank Vicaretti, with me today. And we're just going to have a good time, and we're going to talk, and allow the Holy Spirit to just speak and lead us. So once again, I want to introduce you to my brother from another mother, <laughs> Frank Vicaretti. Hi, Pastor. Uh, Frank, how are you? <laughs> well. Man, I'm so excited to sit down with you, you know. Uh, the Most High has done so many awesome things in your life. Me and you, we met about, what, 2001? 2001. And it was me being introduced to you because of a business opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up becoming like the best of friends, like I said, and brothers. Amen. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to sit down and talk to you about is just over the last few years, you know, our Heavenly Father has done so many great things for you. And... Stuff that even if you explain it, 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 it just doesn't make any sense to anyone. You know, I don't know what are you com what you're comfortable with sharing. But, you know, a few years ago, you, we were talking earlier how you had an ordeal in your life and we sat down in a restaurant. And I believe maybe you believe that this was really the turning point in your relationship with the with the Heavenly Father. Yeah. Uh, you know, would you mind sharing? Uh, yeah, no, okay. I, I, I mean, I uh, <clears throat> on the outside. Uh, looked as this great, successful person, mm -hmm. had it all, lived on the back of a golf course, drove a good car, traveled all over the world, um, was at the top of the top, if you will, in the businesses I was in. But behind um, all of that uh, facade mm -hmm. was a broken man that was in bondage uh, mm -hmm. to gambling and just uh, partying and all the things, you know, of the world. And uh, I chose those things. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and finally, my world came crashing down. We know that uh, what we sow, we reap. Yeah. And uh, so when you and I uh, saw each other in uh, 2004, I mean, we obviously saw each other time, but when we were in that restaurant uh, in, in the spring of 2004, that was really the culmination of a lot of bad choices and decisions mm -hmm. when it all came and fell apart. Um, and uh, obviously, one of the things that came with it was me uh, being sentenced to go to federal prison mm -hmm. uh, for tax evasion and uh, doing some bad things to some people financially uh, that, uh, that brought, that, brought that upon myself. How long were you actually um, incarcerated? Uh, well, it takes time, obviously, for the legal process. So you and I, we, it was in 2004 when everything came apart. Yeah. June of 2009 is when I actually had a, re uh, be a report to go in. And then I ended up, <clears throat> excuse me, coming out in December of 2010, and then like with halfway house and all that, uh, March of 2011 is when I was officially uh, done, and then went on to you know probation. I didn't even realize that it was that long of a period before you actually went through the legal process. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's that's, wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Because the whole time, you know, you were so upbeat and just so um, positive, you know, especially after we talked in the restaurant, mm -hmm. it's just like the Holy Spirit just started doing a work in you that was just amazing. And, you know, I, what I know, what, what these people don't know is you lost everything. Mm -hmm. You lost everything. And like you said, from the Mercedes uh, to the house on the golf course to nice uh, big income coming mm -hmm. in, <laughs> you lost everything. You know, here's the thing that's amazing. You probably don't remember telling me this. You were like, okay with losing everything. Because you said to me, you don't remember this, you said to me that, you know, basically if, if God gave it to me before, I know he can do it, to, do it again. And you were so humble. You came out and you, you worked some jobs that other people of your stature going in probably wouldn't have wanted to do. But you were so humble. What happened between uh, the sentencing and you doing the time? What happened to you from a mindset perspective, spiritually that you just came out and you was like, you know, whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'm going to do it. What, what, what was that? I mean, what was that like? What was that yeah. process like? Well, <clears throat> I think one was uh, just coming to a point where I actually hated who I was. Mm -hmm. um, and then sec I still remember looking at this tree in my uh, backyard. It was because it was in the fall, mm -hmm. you know, uh, later in that year. <clears throat> and uh, it was bare like a typical tree would be mm -hmm. heading in the winter. <clears throat> and I remember looking at it and I said, Lord, that's how I feel right now. That's really me. And, uh, and, I, and I know, you know, the Lord had a break, you know, chop me down, if you will, even beyond that tree to a stump uh, kind of a thing. And, mm -hmm. I, and it was the best thing that happened to me. And I know that sounds a little odd, but um, I was serving me. It was all about wow. me. Uh, I was my own first idol and had many other idols in my life. And God, we know God destroys idols. He doesn't want them. Can't serve him in, in, in idols. Um, and then the, the most, so I think part of it was, 
Um, my pride had to be broken, mm -hmm. uh, which was a big thing. I mean, my, I'm embarrassed to say this, but my uh, mantra song in life was my way. By Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Okay. And God had to let me know, um, no, yeah. it ain't going to be your way. So I had to learn uh, first the fear of God, and in in a, not just the reverence. I wasn't even at the reverence part, knowing that he is real and who he is. And then from there, starting to learn about him. Yes. Uh, and then from there, when I went to prison, the intimacy came in. Wow. And, uh, and I think that was the, the change. That changed everything. Because then it became, you know, we talk about the fruit of the Spirit and all the things, you know, God's mercy and grace mm -hmm. and all, this joy and peace that passes all understanding. When I got to taste and see that and experience mm -hmm. that on an intimate level and know that I can go to a father who loves me and, you know, sure, I have to deal with consequences of my decisions, um, I fell in love with God. Wow. And that changed everything. So everything else became secondary. I didn't care, even to this day. I mean, sure, everybody wants to be successful at things that they do, but it's not about success for me. It's about having that spirit of excellence and giving God glory and pleasing Him for all the talents and gifts He's given me. It's not about me having things for me, but being able to be a vessel <clears throat> that could be passed on to other people so they can get a, a taste and, and, and get an experience of who God really is. And so wow. it changed everything. But mm -hmm. I had to lose it all before I can gain it all. Wow. So in the kingdom of God, the paradoxical law is that everything is opposite. In order to gain, you have to lose. In order to receive, you have to give. In order to live, you have to die. Mm -hmm. So you actually went through that whole process. Even in the whole to live thing, you had to die. To die is gain, actually, mm -hmm. in the kingdom. Absolutely amazing. So here's the thing that I don't know if you even care about these things, but to me, they're amazing because... In the book of Joel, he talks about how he'll restore the years that the palmer worm and the canker worm have eaten away from his great army. And obviously, you are not where you were in certain areas financially from years ago. But man, he's been doing an amazing thing with this whole healthy you. I, I, did y'all get that right there? <laughs> with the whole healthy you. And it's amazing because you're back in a business. He's giving you, like, to me, what I consider a divine ideal. This whole fruit thing is amazing. He don't know us by the fruit that we bear, mm -hmm. you know, fruit of the spirit. You know, just keep going on. So I don't know where the concept <laughs> of the fruit piece came from. And I know you worked with a guy for about a year. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's just like step after step, the Holy Spirit's been leading you in this whole fruit concept. Just kind of, you know, I don't even know if you're thinking like I'm thinking, but where did this all come from? <clears throat> well, I remember, I mean, after I got out of prison, I went back to doing what I was doing. Um, and I mean, that's, I did well, I did well with that. Mm -hmm. And I really felt that's where I was being led. Little did I know that the Lord was leading me in a different direction. I still remember in May 2012, uh, the Lord started putting on my heart of diversifying for what I was doing, or at least that's what I thought he was mm -hmm. saying or showing me. Um, I didn't really understand then that he was really telling me, I'm sending you in a different direction. I just thought it meant diversify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and um, so, and of all places, he led me to Craigslist. I started going through looking for business opportunities, and I'm like, Lord, wh wh what is it I'm supposed to be looking Craigslist for? Craigslist with business yeah, and opportunities. Yeah, of all places, yeah. right? So, a couple weeks went by, and I, every day I'm going through, and I one day looked at this fruit stand, kept going, and I kept being led back to it, and I had no idea. I'm like, what's up with this? few days later, I'm again being back to it. So short or long story, I ended up calling the number on it and finding out that this company, you know, had some contractors. I'm like, okay, Lord just, and everything kept confirming that's what he wanted me to do. And as soon as I started with them, um, literally within the first two months, so this is in the summer of 2012, um, he basically showed me that I was in training to learn this concept, but he showed me a whole different picture yeah. of what it was going to look like. Um, so a year later, fast forward, I went on my own and started out with about 80 uh, accounts um, and just following this vision that he gave me of uh, building this one-stop kiosk, if you will, mm -hmm. healthy station and, you know, convenience stores and cafes and indoor sports facilities, offices, whatever it is, and just keep walking into it. And now fast forward, uh, you know, summer 2018, we have about 625 locations uh and it's just it's i mean the company probably will be um if not at the end of this year the end uh, by next year uh, a million dollar company and it's just mind-boggling so you mean to tell me you started out with 80 accounts yes and a few years later you're at over 600 accounts correct and if i asked you to explain how that happened <laughs> What would you say to me then? I would say it's only God. It's yeah. not a cliche. I mean, 
you know, I mean, there's so many stories from, I mean, to give an example. I don't even know how to build one of those display racks. I'm not, I don't know how to do that stuff. Yeah. And I tried to put them together best I could. They wobbled. And then next thing I know, my brother's father-in-law comes along and says, I feel like the Lord's led me to help you build these and came up with our concept that we have today. Um, we got uh, one of the biggest corporate accounts that um, in this area that just timing of it, uh, you know, and this is with no money, no credit, nothing. God just kept opening doors and kept surrounding me with just the amazing people to guide and direct and, and, and bring favor. And it's, it's God. And it's, you know, it's just, it's mind boggling. So you, when you, you said in, in how many, in, in, within less than a year, you, you should be at a million dollar company? Yeah, I would say by this year might be just a little bit short of that, but by next year we'll definitely be a million dollar company. So, wow. But the coolest part about it is, <clears throat> is how many people are being affected. You talk about fruit, and I totally am on the same page okay. uh, with that spiritualizing <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the amount of individuals that have been impacted that, that are in our team, our clients, our vendors, people we're in contact when we're just out and about, um, uh, families that have been impacted, communities that have been impacted. There's uh, some churches and missionaries and outreach ministries. Yeah, you've that been are blessing being, our church. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's so many different... And it's like so cool watching how God just is bringing these different things along within his kingdom that he wants the business to be used to sow into, whether yeah. it's a person or, or uh, an entity. Um, and to me, that's the part that drives me every day and excites me every day. And in the past, it was like, what can I accumulate? Yeah. Today, it's about, Lord, I just want to be the, I want to just see you pour through me as a vessel. So you, you, you're even involved in missions? Yep. Okay. We, have a, we support a couple. Uh, we support a missionary to the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, we support a missionary to Zambia. And then we also support a general missionary uh, group as well that's over 125 individuals where, you know, a little part goes to each one of them. Yeah. Uh, a couple food pantries, a couple out, outreach ministries for people that are down and out. <clears throat> Besides your church, there's a couple other churches that yeah. get supported with. And, um, and yeah. it's, been, it's, it's fun. It's there's nothing like going through the day and just going like it's almost like a kid yeah. giggling and going, OK, Dad, what are you going to do today? And just watching God's hand work before your eyes is, is uh, it's amazing. You talk about fruit that will remain. Amen. Like like, you know, one of the things and you know, I know you, you, you agree with me on this, like only what we do for Jesus Christ is going to last. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said in the past, everything was self-serving. It was about you know, ourselves, you know, one of the real marks of stewardship is that we're committed to serving others and not self-serving. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so impressed that out of all of this chaos and all of this trouble, this beautiful life and ministry has uh, arisen, risen and been birthed. And, you know, it's like the scripture talks about how with the same comfort that the most high God has met us, he'll meet others. Mm -hmm. So I just think that it's amazing that you've been able to come out of this situation Obviously, he's restored you, yeah. but you've been able to be such a blessing to other people. And obviously, going into this, you wouldn't think like, okay, all of this is going right. to come out of it. Yeah, no clue. It, it's <laughs> just amazing. And I just want to, first of all, I want to just tell you, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i just so proud of what the, what the Father's doing in your life. With, it's just amazing. Again, like you said, you didn't even have all of this in place, but every day he's just kind of been leading you. And that's why the scripture says the footsteps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you really just go ahead and submit your will to his will, literally, he'll say, because I'm sure you had those examples. I don't know what to do next. And then time, right out of, yeah, time, time after time. I mean, it's just it's I don't think I, I don't apply logic mm -hmm. to how God does things because he doesn't operate that way. No, and, not at uh, all. And I just sit back. And to me, the coolest part has been as well is, is you know, is, is we talk about testimony. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I think we think of testimony, meaning our salvation testimony. And that, that's a big part of it. Yeah. But <clears throat> being able to talk with business people and they go, how, you know, today's a, is an example. <clears throat> In today's business world, businesses are tight on money and they're extending terms another 30 days. And how are your customers not only not doing that, but they're paying you early. And I'm like, because God controls the heart. And they're like, yeah. no, really? I'm like, yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, it's those kind you, of things. Because if you try to explain it some other way, it doesn't make any right. sense based on what's happening in business. Right. But he's just favoring you. Right. So it's just another way. It's another testimony yeah. to be able to plant a seed with someone where they can sit there and go, it, it, he's right. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. At some point, people have to come to the end of their logic mm -hmm. and make a choice. There's either a real God 
or I'm the God. Yeah. Right? Isn't that the, the M? Yes. So to me, that's another side of testimony to be able to plant without somebody feeling like you're Bible thumping them or telling them, you know, they're, you know, whatever, yeah. which are all true. And that's the most important, not discounting that, but just another way to share testimony. And it's ultimately, you know, what did Jesus say throughout his, his ministry? I'm here to please the father yes. and do his will and do his right. Will. So that's another form of pleasing the father and doing his will is just pointing people back to the one. Well, here's the thing. As my business mentor, which you've been for some years, uh, I was mentoring you spiritually in ways I didn't even understand mm -hmm. and, and with mindset change and stuff like that. But you used to say this to me all the time. You used to say, story sell, facts tell, right. right? Scripture says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. That's right. So in reality, what's really been happening is like you said, you haven't been Bible thumping people. You've just been sharing your testimony. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing for people to have titles but it's another thing to have a testimony. So I say this, I give an example. I said this to somebody, would you rather have the, tes the, the testimony of a father or the title of a father? Would you rather have the title of a preacher or a minister or the testimony that you've been ministered to by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and now you're ministering to people? You know, when it comes down to it, like you said, success. I mean, the, the, the world's version of success is the accumulation of things and materialism and so on and forth. But it sounds like to me, you got the real picture of what success is. Real success is to have your life aligned with the will of, the, of, mm -hmm. of our Heavenly Father and to be walking that out and changing people, people's lives. Like you really hear just as a vessel of change where the Holy Spirit ministers to you and to you mm -hmm. so you can minister to other people. Amen. You talked about with your business, how, you, how, you, how you've been able to affect other people's lives. Have you had anybody since you've been doing this that have become the salvation as a result of being connected to your business? Um, directly through me, no, that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, but indirectly, I know many ways. I mean, I know, you know, for example, there's a sports, a VBS that we support. Mm -hmm. And every year there's, uh, you know, there's a couple of kids or several kids that come to salvation, uh, uh, the missionaries here in testimony. So it's not, a, we may not always be that direct person. And I believe in scripture, we see, the different gifting of, of the Holy Spirit and all yeah. that. You know, I may not be that direct one, but but we all, I, I preach this all the time to uh, the, the, the Christians in our business and yeah. just in people I disciple. We're sowers, we're waterers, and we're builders. At the end of the day, God brings the increase. Yes. We just do our part, let Paul. God do what he does. Paul says it you know, all the time. So otherwise we get plant? caught up. Why yeah. isn't this person, that's not our job. That's their, their job with God one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. We can't fix people. We can't change people. We can only bring them hope. We can only bring them the good news. We can only point them to the truth that could set them free. Only point them to the one that loves them so much that sent their son. So whatever, however that looks in the end, we're sowing, we're watering and building and let God do what God's good at, that we would all fail miserably. Brother, you at. said it all, man. <laughs> you said, because the, what I think Paul said, one plants, one water. Right. He gets, the God gets the increase. So yes, you have led people to salvation. Right. When you get to heaven, believe me, there's a total, total group of people, a bunch of people you don't even know, but you've been responsible for them getting the gospel right. and for them being Amen. saved ultimately in the end. So listen, because of time, you're a busy man. I talked about you last night in Bible study because I've been teaching on stewardship and I've been talking about time, talent, and treasure. And I was saying, you know, I said, I got a great friend. He's my brother. I said, some of y'all have seen him. Y'all have met him. I said, and when we talk about each other from a more intimate perspective, we both get a little misty eyed. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do that for you right now. <laughs> but I was telling them, I said, as far as time management, I learned a lot from you. I said, I used to know that if I called him at a certain time in the morning, he wasn't ignoring me. He would get back to me. But if he was in prayer and doing his devotion, he wasn't breaking it for anybody. I said, and he would tell me, Rodney, I'm on the phones from 10 <laughs> to 1. If that's what you said, you one o'clock, you know, he was like, because one o'clock I'm going to do this. I mean, you've always been very tight about that. I mean, when did this become like a major part of how you live? Like even even you got your, your Bible study, if you're teaching your youth groups, if you like you got your time stuff, like even now we got to get you out of here because you got something time. Like when how, when did you know and how did you know that this would like major, make a major difference in in your success as a, being a good steward of your time? Mm -hmm. um, I think it started back um, in the early, like late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And it was really from uh, some of the books I read mm -hmm. and a couple of people that were personal mentors to me. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I remember one of my mentors who actually has passed uh, recently, 
him always used to say, and take all that I have, it could be replaced, but don't waste time. And he said, people have a, a, a misconstrue time. They call it time management. And you even said it. I'm not dogging you on it. No, but that's said, okay. You're teaching said, me. You, he said, you can't manage time. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to manage it. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's about time use. How are we using our time? Some people might say it's a little semantical, but it's a mindset. Because mm -hmm. if I'm trying to manage something versus how am I using it, especially with time that can't be replaced, money could be replaced, so many things can be replaced, time can't. Wow. So it gave me a, uh, uh, an urgent perspective. It gave me a perspective of always examining myself, of what am I spending my time on, and how is that balanced? So, you know, we, we go through our, some people have a wheel, you know, of life of the different categories. Mm -hmm. Some people do the vertical, you know, God first, family second, et cetera. So I just schedule my time according to the perspective of what's most important, God, family, et cetera. And I schedule it out and I stay to that schedule, but it's not so regimented that there, it's like I'm suffocating or I feel robotic. Mm -hmm. I have time in there for rest. I have buffers set up in there. And, and, the, and I just try to respect the time, see this, it's, it's about respect. God gave me the time because he created it, he owns it. We all have an appointment to death. Mm -hmm. We don't know the day unless Christ comes first. Yes. <clears throat> so how, no different than if he gives me a vehicle to drive or gives me a job or gives me a, a new relationship, friendship, whatever it is. It's something that God gave me. How am I, what, how am I giving him a return back on that and am I wasting it? Sure, there's times where we're gonna quote unquote do nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's about how do you utilize it being, you know, what is it being used on? Everybody says they're busy. And yes. one of my favorite questions is, busy doing what? And, and you have what? to learn how to, what's best and what's good. Say yes to the best. Say no to the good. I say to, to, no to a lot of things that people offer to do, um, business, f social, whatever. I have to ask myself, is that the best? Wow. And use Wait a minute. Your time Did you just say, say yes to the best and, and no, no to, to the, the good? good. You just said it was good. And you I, didn't say no to the bad. Right. Because I guess the bad is just easier to right. say no to. Yep. I've never heard that before. Say yes to the best, best. no to the good. Right. Because there's a lot of good things that we get caught up. I mean, I think one of the epidemics going on today in the, in the, in the church is we're, um, we're into this seven days a week operation with no rest. And we could look throughout the Bible about the Sabbath, you know, and do we, do, do we have a day of rest? Does it, uh, secondly, do we take time to spend with God? Is it, do we have an appointment time with him? And mm -hmm. then we know throughout the day we can commune with him. It doesn't have to be, you know, check the box. I spend time with God. I'll see you tomorrow. We can commune with him. So are we being intentional while in our car ride? I can listen to the music for 15 minutes. It could be good music, Christian music, but maybe I want to spend 15 minutes of, of that time with God, that's now best. It doesn't have to be that way every day, yeah. but it's just a mindset of where am I spending my time? How am I using it? And how is it being you know, used for his kingdom? And how is it helping not only uh, that, but helping other people around me? We're, we're, we're called to invest in people. Yes. We're called to sow into people. And then we're called to also take care of ourselves. Jesus talked about resting in the desert place. And Psalm, it talks about having that proper rest at night and, and sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody sleeps different, but the context is doing what we're supposed to do for the day, you know, and like Ecclesiastes, do the work, yeah. drink, eat, and sleep, yeah. right? So, and too many people are just go, go, go. We could be, we could end up doing a lot of good ministries. Is that, is that really good? Because if we're not doing what God wants us to do in the ministry, it's good. That means we're in the flesh. Wow. What, what is that going to bring at the judgment seat one day? Wow. That's hay and stubble. But if we're bringing the best because God's called it to us and the Holy Spirit is moving in and through us and we like, whoa, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. <clears throat> now it's the best. It's going to bear, everything about God is multiplication and, 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 and bears fruit. Yeah, yeah. So we can apply that best and good to our families, to our friendships, to our careers, to our ministries. Um, and we have to, we have to be, and we can't just, oh, it's not a one, me. we have to think about it daily. I'm going to apply that because <laughs> I never looked at it that way because it's always easy for me to say no to the bad. Right. But I never thought about the best and the good piece. Yeah. And then one other point, component I always tell them about, I always use the reference, what hat are you wearing? So like right now you and I are here together. I'm in this interview hat. Yeah. I'm not thinking about anything else. When I leave here, I have a meeting I'm going to. And I have time set aside for an hour for that. 
I'm, my hat's in that. When I do third and fourth grade ministry on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. it's game on, the hat's on, third and fourth ministry. I'm not thinking about my business. I'm not thinking about anything else, but Lord, how do you want to use me in this? When I'm, so wear the hat, you know, you're married. So when you're, it's time you and your wife go on a date night, have the Michelle hat, let, hat on. Yeah. It's time for you and her. The kids, outside of emergencies, yeah. it's your guy's time. Yes. Don't try to th have all these other hats on. Stay in the moment that you're in and wow. be in the zone. And now time you're usage. using the time at a whole nother level. It's becoming productive. You're not just using it. It's productive time. Yes. And it has a multiplying effect to it. Yes. Awesome. If you didn't get anything out of that, <laughs> I can't help you. But you just blessed me That's with not that. an original. So I, it doesn't matter. I was taught that. It doesn't matter because it becomes an original once you live it out yourself. Right. So it's just information. Until then, you know, Job 42 and 5, he says something to the effect of, I knew you by the hearing of the ear. But now my eye seeth thee for you mm -hmm. myself. So it's original once you see for yourself, experience for yourself. Right. Like I could say, hey, Jesus is the healer. But until I need to be healed, Amen. I can share your testimony. But it's nothing like having my own. So it becomes an original right. when it becomes a part of your yep. own life. So here's the thing. We, you got to go to a meeting. I know you're not thinking about it, but I'm thinking about <laughs> it because you're giving me your time. And we're using the best use of this time for the Father. Amen. I got a question to ask you, then I'm going to ask you to just encourage those that are watching. Mm -hmm. So you still get up in the morning and do your devotion before you do anything? Every day. Every uh, day. And I, you know what, <laughs> Pastor? I still remember uh, when I started getting my life back in order mm -hmm. and I got right with the Lord. <clears throat> I remember saying, Lord, Matthew 6, 33, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, you're going to be first. And I don't care if I'm on two hours of sleep or seven hours of sleep, you're first. And so I had, a, and knowing me, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about other people, knowing me, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm a person that <clears throat> loses focus quick. I'm all over the place. It's my yeah. personality. Um, you know that about me. Mm -hmm. So I had to train my mind that if I don't spend time with the Lord in, in his word and prayer, I might as well go back to bed. It's going to be a wasted day. Wow. And that was the original driving force. But then as I got more intimate and got to know him more, now I wake up, I'm like, praise God. I'm like, all Let's right, go. Lord, what are, we, what are you going to show me today? I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, you know, it's, yeah. it changed. But in the beginning, I had, a, it was I, just being honest of who I am. It's like once I go, like people talk about working out. I could never work out other than first thing in the morning. Why? Because I know me. I get going and it's like, I'm gone. So I had to just try to be honest about that. And I'm not saying that somebody can't read it other times of the day or pray. But for me, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of references to talk about the morning. I get it. But for me, I just had to stop and say, okay, let's be honest to who you are. When will be the most effective time? And then that's what I did. And then it's, it's all I did. Then after some time passed, not a lot of time, I started wanting more of him. Yeah. And then it started being, I want to listen to a sermon while I'm driving. I want to just talk. I just want to hear God. I want to shut up. Yeah. You know, I want, to, I want to sing songs. And now it's like to me when people say, what does prayer mean to you? I understand there's specific prayer time. But to me, really, prayer is taken out a defini different definition of me. It's communion. I just want to commune with God. None of us can do it 24-7. I think Jesus is trying to get us to understand that, too, when he was saying men should always pray and not faint. He was, he was basically saying what you were saying. You don't have to just, okay, I know from a discipline perspective, you need to do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. You need to do it the way you're doing it. But for the most part, what you're saying is, man, I'm in fellowship and I'm communing with him all day long. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm praying and I'm meditating all day long. So, you know, that's a powerful concept because we got to go. Yes. We're going to do this again. <laughs> but listen, for that person that's watching, that is that are, they may be in the place right now where they feel like they've made some mistakes. Everything is just over. There is no hope. There's no way to come back from anything that they've done. And you were sitting there in front of this person. And I mean, we could pick any subject, but the bottom line, the common ground is it's over. There's no way I can recover. I just don't see my life turning around. And we've all been there. I know I have mm -hmm. where it was like there's no way to... It, it, when I think back sometimes, I think of the things that I thought was like ending my life. <laughs> because I know the grace of, of God now and, and, and his compassion mm -hmm. and when I should have been consumed and his grace and mercy. Sometimes I really think like I can't even believe I was like right. at that place. But we've all been there where it's like it's no hope. It's over. What would you say to that person if you 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 you, you know, they were standing right here. 
What, what would you like to say to that person? And I'm going to give you a chance. I want you to look right into that camera right there okay. and just begin to minister to them and share with them what you've learned being in that same place about our Heavenly Father. I think the first thing I would say is I would I'd be up in, empathetic to uh, what they're going through. Um, we all have our, uh, our, our moments that were quote unquote down, different for everybody, but they all still feel the same for each individual. <clears throat> and I would just say that um, that is a lie from hell mm. because it's not true. That's not according to God's word. If we could do the worst thing and God still says that if you turn back to me, repent, turn back to me, get right with me, follow me, I will restore. I'll, you'll be reconciled. I'll restore back to you. Sure, there'll be the consequences of whatever happened, whether you were a victim or you're, it was self-inflicted. Um, but we have to make a choice. Either A, I choose to be a victim for the rest of my life over whatever it is we're dealing with, or I choose to be stuck in this circumstance and just stay there and do nothing, or I choose to surrender to God. I just give it to him. He's the only one that could turn everything around. Um, so I would tell you to uh, just go to God and say, Lord, be honest with him. He already knows. <laughs> this is what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. <laughs> I feel hopeless, whatever it is. Help me just cry out to him and, and allow him to minister <coughs> excuse me, to you in whatever way that is um, and just trust him, just obey him. Um, I, I said this um, probably about three years ago. I did a little mini sermon at our church, and I was telling them that when I first got right with the Lord, Matthew 6.33 was the verse that, but, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all, not some, not a few, all these things will be added unto you, shall be added unto you. And I remember going home after that verse, and I reflected and thought about all the people I've hurt, all the people I've, I've let down, all the things I've destroyed, and then vice versa, some people have done that to me. And then I thought about, God hasn't let me down yet. Maybe several months went by. And I said, God, you're, a, you're batting 100 right now. <laughs> and I'm going to continue. You know what now? Today is uh, August 2018, uh, 11 years later. And God has still not let me down. And, and I say to you, he won't let you down. And the reason why I could say that is because it's impossible. Wow. Because his word says so. So we could trust in ourselves. We could trust in man, trust in the world, or trust in God. Um, guaranteed he'll never let us down. I, I didn't think he was going to make it through without getting a little <laughs> misty-eyed. Uh, that's just beautiful. So listen, if you, you've watched this uh, video, uh, sit down, sitting down and talking, and you want prayer, you want someone to reach out to you, you can just email us at prayer at livingindominion.com. It's on the screen, prayer at livingindominion.com. Or you can also get on our prayer call the phone number for the prayer call is on the screen, as well as the access number and the time that we're praying. And we'll pray and minister to you. We love you. We can't wait to hear from you. I know that this has been a blessing, but I pray that it changes your life, which I know it will. All right. We'll see you later. Till next time. I love you.